rather tricky underfoot here, but this is an area known locally as the map of Britain, purely for the shape. But it was once pine plantation, and the pine plantation covered a number of ancient oaks here. Those pines were removed and allowed those ancients still living to continue to grow, hopefully, for another couple of hundred years. However, some are long since dead, but the host, the species, or one of the species that I'm after today. is a very quiet part in general at least of Sherwood Forest it's an area although there's a pathway about 50 meters or so to my left it's very often quiet and very few people go across it I mean a clearing or it's sort of a clearing there's lots of silver birch regrowth here the whole area was cleared a number of years ago and the birch has grown up as a consequence, along with lots of bramble. But there are some spectacular ancients in this area of Sherwood Forest. It's an area known as the map of Britain locally. That's based on the shape of this area at the time. But what's good about it, it occasionally turns up false scorpions, and that's what I'm here for today. The trees are quite suitable. Most of the ones that are here are completely dead and if you can find the right piece of wood to look underneath quite often you can score although with false scorpions it's always a difficult task to find one it's really difficult terrain to get into but once you can get to the foot of these ancients that are here it's quite often well worth the effort now I've only found one species here, hopefully I might find that today, but the most likely species I'm going to find is Chernese Simicoides, which is a decent size for a UK pseudoscorpion. It's not the largest, the largest is Dendrocurnes cyaneus, and that species is found at Sherwood, but I've yet to see it, and Dillis and I looked for it over many years and never found it. Hopefully one day it'll give itself up. But these trees are magnificent. This is tree number 224, and it's got a diameter, as we looked at it now, of about seven feet. It's a huge thing, and it is still alive. They have done quite well since this area was opened up. But before I can find or stand any chance of finding false scorpions, I need to find the right kind of bark. It needs to be loose, and if it's not bark, just wear... The bark has disappeared off this part of the tree over the years. Any loose wood, that's where I need to look under. But finding that, or the right particular piece of wood, is as difficult as finding the false scorpion itself. It's not as easy as you'd think. Any loose wood, or 99 times out of 100 any loose wood, isn't really suitable at all. I'm just looking, just in case. And wherever possible, I always put what I lift up back. That way, they can't accuse me of ripping the bark off trees at Sherwood Forest for no apparent reason. They've got a herd of long wool cattle that can do that far better than I can. Well, it's took a lot of effort and a lot of lifting up suitable 
places on the bark or on the, the dry wood, but I have located one here. This is one of our four under the bark pseudoscorpions that can be found at Sherwood Forest. I'm not aware of any other ones off hand, but I think this one may well be Lampraternes chiseri. It's not one of the three, three species that I was hoping for, and it's certainly not one of the two larger ones. And the most likely one I was expecting was Chernes semicoides. Always hope for Dendrocernes cerneus. But this, I think, is Chiseri. It's a species I've seen before a couple of times. And in terms of the, those species found at Sherwood, it is quite obvious because the claws are a very shiny red colour in comparison to other species, Chinese semicoides, as you'll have seen from the photographs. The claws are very dull. So this is an excellent find of all the species. This was the last one I was expecting to find, or hoping to find. The largest of the lot, Dendrocernes sinus. That still eludes me. How many more years will I have to go before that one finally gives itself up? But in order to find these things, you have to look under the right type of wood or the right piece of wood. A lot of it's down to look and lots of turning up, turn over pieces of wood. And this one wasn't under bark, it was the bark's long since come off this particular part of this oak. And it was under a piece of wood which has started to flake off. So I'm very pleased with that. I'm, sometimes you can't always guarantee these things. You probably see false scorpions at Sherwood once every two or three visits if you're actually looking for them. So this is a nice find and I'm happy with this. So provisionally I'm pretty sure that this is Lampracernes or Lampracernes chiseri. Excellent. Now, so if I just place that back and secure it in, just press it in, that false scorpion it's completely unharmed and can continue to overwinter, probably emerging maybe as early as late March if it stays mild, or more likely sometime in April. That's a nice record. I didn't expect Lampragurney's chiser, I must admit. So, no one's any the wiser that we've even been and had a look at this. Well, that ended up being a success, and I'm pleased about that because you can come up time and time again here in the forest and fail to find a false scorpion. So it's always nice when I do manage to find one. And I'll come back again to look for Churney Simicoides, that's slightly bigger, and then maybe one day we'll find that mythological Tendrocurney Sinus. Until then, it's time for a bit of snap. And I might even treat myself to a drink.